The Panthers signed former Dolphins guard Robert Hunt to a five-year, $100 million contract, $63 million guaranteed. They also gave Damian Lewis four years, $53 million with $27 guaranteed. And they've kind of added two versions of the same player, two of the most physical and aggressive offensive linemen in the NFL. Both of them are over 320 pounds. They have put some serious investment into beefing up the interior of this offensive line. And this video is going to focus on Robert Hunt, who's been one of my favorite players to watch over the last couple of years. Statistically, he had a great season in 2023. He did miss some time with injury, but when he was on the field, he had the lowest pressure rate allowed of any guard in the NFL. He had the lowest blown block percentage, according to Sports Info Solutions. He didn't have a single false start. He only gave up one sack and five pressures, and he was PFF's sixth highest graded guard. Now, even though I like Robert Hunt, I will say 20 million a year is pretty steep. Seeing the rest of the guard contracts definitely makes me feel better about it. There was clearly a lot of bidding going on that drove the price up. So analyzing it from a pure value perspective, I'm not in love with the deal because I do think that Robert Hunt has some flaws as a player and we'll get into those obviously, but I do think that Robert Hunt is a massive upgrade and he brings a lot of good things to the table. So we got to start with the run game. I think that Robert Hunt's aggressive finishing demeanor is second to no one in the NFL. This dude plays like he's getting cash under the table for every pancake. He's just on a mission to put defenders on their back. Obviously that clears open running lanes, but I also think it has a positive effect on kind of the overall demeanor of the offensive line. So on this play, the Dolphins are running a toss to Devin A-Chain. Robert Hunt has an overtake block on the nose tackle, so he's coming over to secure this reach block. He does a good job with this initial hand placement. He wins the play side shoulder. He doesn't do a great job sliding his feet, and that kind of causes him to lose some leverage, but then he recovers control of the block and just drives this dude into the ground at the end of the play. When you see blocks like this on linebackers, it's impressive, but to do this to a nose tackle pretty much never happens in the NFL. Here's another one from the same game. He's got a down block on Jonathan Allen. Allen kind of gets his feet tied up and isn't playing with a wide base, and Hunt just takes advantage of that, centralizes his force, puts him on his back. Right here, they're running wide zone to the weak side. He's got a reach block on this three technique, but instead he just tosses him four yards to the side and clears open the A gap. I'm going to say this a few times, but it's not normal to be able to toss 300 pound humans around like this. And then right here, he climbs to the second level. You see that stiff punch with just unlimited striking power when he reaches his target. This is high school recruit huddle type of stuff. Here's another play that just should not be able to happen. If you try to engage with Robert Hunt with this kind of pad level, this is the exact result you can expect. 94 kind of lifts himself into that initial engagement. Robert Hunt just runs his feet through contact and pancakes him. And then another play here in the run game, he's leaking out on a jailbreak screen. Good job reaching his target. He redirects when he tries to undercut him, and then he latches on and flips him over. So the Panthers are getting a dominant tone setter in the run game with Robert Hunt. There aren't a lot of offensive linemen in the NFL that are this big and powerful and play with this level of a mean streak, but he also has pretty good technique and understanding of leverage and angles. He does a good job of torquing defensive tackles out of rushing lanes. He has a good sense for the running back's aiming point and which gap they're trying to hit, and he can just clear out open space and he was the driving force behind a lot of the Dolphins' explosive plays on the ground. Pass protection is where I have some more concerns with Robert Hunt. It's not all bad. He's not a player that's good in the running game and a liability in pass protection or anything like that. Like I said, he only allowed five pressures and one sack last season. I think part of that does speak to his improvement as a pass protector, but it also has a lot to do with the Dolphins' scheme. Their passing game is really designed to protect their offensive linemen. If you look at the lowest pressure rate, allowed for offensive guards last year. It was Robert Hunt at one and Isaiah Wynn at two. I don't necessarily think those are the two best pass protecting guards in the NFL, but starting off with the positive, he has a rock solid anchor. People don't usually try to hit him with a bull rush, but when they do, it goes absolutely nowhere. He has heavy hands. A lot of times his initial strike just ends the rep immediately. And for the most part, he has accurate hand placement. He does a good job of getting his hands inside. I thought the matchup against Philadelphia was probably one of his most impressive pass blocking performances that I've watched for his entire career. He had some really high level reps against Fletcher Cox and Jalen Carter. And I do think comparing his 2022 tape to last year's tape, he showed improvements with his footwork as far as blocking cross face moves. So he's still a young player and there's definitely room for improvement with some of his weaknesses. And then I was also really impressed with his awareness and his ability to scan the field and find work. There were a couple nice reps from the Baltimore game. Right here, the edge rushers countering inside. He 
slides over, clotheslines him, and protects the B-gap. And then on this play, the right tackle gets beat around the edge. Robert Hunt has the awareness to sprint to the back of the pocket and lay out to try to give Tua more time. He ends up throwing an interception, so it was a wasted effort, but you love to see this level of hustle and awareness. But I think he has very limited recovery ability and slide quickness, and he exacerbates that problem with delayed reactions and stopping his feet when he gets cross-face moves. So right here, he strikes with the left hand. His next movements need to be predicated on sealing off this A gap if this left hand gets swiped down. So when he strikes with this left hand, he needs to be sliding over to the left or at least preparing to, but he just throws his hand, stops his feet, it gets swiped down, and then he doesn't really have the recovery quickness to mirror him. Another play right here against Christian Barmore. Again, just not a great job of moving his feet. Barmore wins the edge and Hunt can't really afford to be that delayed getting into his recovery. On this play, he overextends with a two-hand punch. The pass rusher reacts by spinning inside through the A gap and he can't react quickly enough. So I like a lot of aspects of the signing and I think he'll definitely be an upgrade. I do worry in an offense that exposes him to more true pass sets that he's probably not gonna put up as clean of a pass blocking record as he did in Miami. Someone like Grady Jarrett or Kalijah Kansi in the NFC South, I think could be an unfavorable mashup for him. But at the very least, you're gonna get a ton of pancakes and I think for sure an upgraded running game. Thank you.